Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community, I'm Trigger, and today we talk about the way to corner in Need for Speed Unbound for beginners. Let's go! First of all, thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate every single view, every single like, every single everything. So thank you for being here. All right, let's get into it. Need for Speed Unbound has unbelievably deep cornering mechanics that go beyond just breaking for a corner, turning into the apex and accelerating out of it. What's nice though, is that if that's how you wanna drive, then you can and it's viable. It may not always be the fastest because a lot of it will depend on your tune and build, but it's possible to race like that and it just hasn't been that way in the past Need for Speed games. My goal with this guide is to help you understand what's possible so that you can train your brain a different way to corner. There are several mechanics we need to go over, but in general, we will be comparing the two most popular ways to take corners, drifting and gripping. Starting with the tune for your car though, and the class it sits in, in general, lower class cars tend to be faster with drift setups, and higher class cars tend to be faster with grip setups. The reason is because the burst NOS is rewarded differently based on the speed and distance drifted or gripped. The more speed through a corner, the more grip NOS you will earn, and the more distance for your drift, the more drift NOS you will earn. Lower tier cars just don't have enough speed to initiate the grip turn rewards most of the time and the higher tier cars slow down way too much when performing a full drift. So that's it, right? High tier equals grip, low tier equals drift. We can end the guide right here. Nope. The tune is equally important. Tuning your car to max grip will allow you to have a smaller turning radius and grip turns that are tighter at higher speeds, which will equal more burst NOS, which helps you go even faster. The same goes for the drift turning. If your car is tuned for drift, it will be much easier to sustain longer drifts and you will gain more burst NOS that way, which again, helps you go faster. I don't know if you're noticing a pattern here, but the goal for you in every corner should be to earn as much burst NOS as you can while sacrificing the minimum amount of speed to do so. It may seem like an insignificant small burst of speed, but it's deeper than that. Burst NOS doesn't just propel you forward. It completely changes the physics of the game. It pushes you in the direction the nose of the car is facing, and it negates all other directional forces being put on your car. Because of that, you can use it to take insane lines through turns. Instead of normal curved racing lines that would normally help you carry speed through a corner, you can now take sharp angle turns that cut off a significant amount of distance traveled and you end up keeping or increasing your speed. It makes for some crazy overtakes in the corners and it's so fun to use. Alright, so why am I spending so much time on burst NOS? I thought this was a video about grip versus drift. Well, you're right, let's get back to it. Choosing which way to take the corner will result in either more or less burst NOS, and that's the key to everything. So you'll want to make sure you can accurately judge the corner and make the right choice based on your car's capability. Let's look at a couple of examples. First, I've got our old friend here, the RSR. It's tuned for maximum grip, and it's currently in the S plus class. So let's analyze this clip of me going around Kennedy Racetrack. I'll point out what I did right and what I could have done a little bit better. For this build, I will want to grip turn as much as possible to earn the most burst NOS. Being rewarded for grip turning in a high tier grip tune car can be as easy as this first lazy corner. It's not tight at all, but I still get one bar of burst NOS. Next, we've got this long sweeper that I'm able to sustain a smooth turn resulting in three full bars of burst NOS for literally just driving the track. Next, we have the short right-hander. Higher skilled drivers than me may use their full burst NOS earlier than I did in this clip, but to be really honest, I'm not skilled enough at controlling this burst, so I'm driving at my own limits. The next turn is a sharp left sweeper that tightens up at the end I enter it with a tiny bit too much speed and break the tires loose, resulting in a drift entry. Ideally, if I wanted to grip this corner, my entry would have been smoother. Even though this one really wasn't too bad, I stay in the grip while controlling my throttle because I know the turn tightens at the end. But you'll notice that when I finally complete the corner, I get a nice healthy three bars of burst to use on the final right hand turn and the ensuing sweeping left onto the main straight. Unfortunately, I missed the window to use that three bars 
And if this were a close race on that last lap, it may have made the difference being first and second. What's crazy though is on that right hand turn just before the final left, I also gripped that one and I was given another two bars for that. So on to the main straight I go. Now I'm not claiming this to be a perfect lap by any means and my lines probably could have been better. I'm also not saying that gripping every single corner is the fastest way to race this track. I just wanted to illustrate for you the power of grip turning when it comes to gaining burst NOS. Let's now take a look at an example of a low tier car. For this, I have my B tier Barracuda tuned for 20% drift on the left side of your screen and 20% grip on the right side of your screen. The AI were basically out of my way by then, plus I don't wanna make you sit through an entire race. Notice on the left side throughout this lap how much more burst NOS was given because of the easy drifting of this B tier car. I do manage to get some grip NOS on the right side, but not enough to keep up with the drift version. It's probably fair criticism that this car is not the perfect car for grip racing, but the difference is pretty obvious. It's just simply harder to gain the grip NOS. And honestly, this car really doesn't feel bad as a grip build. I bet if I built it up for A or A+, it really wouldn't be half bad. The drift build beats the grip build by about four seconds for the total race, which illustrates my point that in most, not all of the lower tier cars, the drift builds seem to work a little bit better. So let me summarize this for you to make it really easy. Although each car has a set of handling characteristics and you'll need to tune each one to its strengths, it's a safe starting point to build high tier cars as grip builds and low tier cars as drift builds. And when racing, try to maximize whichever build you choose by driving that way. Don't build yourself a grip car and then try to drift every corner because that's what the other players in the lobby are doing. If you built it for grip, then race it like it's not a need for speed game and grip all of those corners. You will be surprisingly rewarded for your efforts of breaking and taking a correct line through a corner. This is, once again, especially important for the S tier class. Now the title of this video suggests that I know something that you don't, but what I know is my experience online and everybody is trying to drift every single corner. So I felt like I had to make this video to let you know that gripping is really viable and in most cases, it's actually better. All right, remember that my DMs are always open. Sometimes I just forget things in videos or I just don't explain them well enough. So feel free to send me a message if you got any questions. I read every single message that comes my way, so do not hesitate. All right, shout out to all the Heat 5 members of the channel. I will catch you on the next one. Trigger out.